Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha, Hawaii. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm your best friend as we journey to take your health back. We are coming to you live from downtown Honolulu from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii. Today, our topic of discussion will be on the healing garden. Bloom from within, and I will keep you abreast. That's the key word, abreast. That, and with that, I would like you to take away from today's message. It's going to be a long one, okay? Usually it's a one-liner, but being that this is Ivalani's takeaway, it's going to be <laughs> a song and a dance. So today's takeaway and, uh, is on the discussion of the importance to address your health needs through meditation, quiet time, being still, listening to your body, and understanding what your body's needs are, because only you can hear yourself and feel it. Absolutely. Proper diet and exercise and caring for the environment. Because we all know that when you malama the aina, the aina will malama you. So today we are very excited and honored to welcome a very dear, dear pink sweet friend. She is a two-time cancer survivor and a kumuhula. This is Ivalani Walt Seyu. Ah, mahalo. Aloha. Wendy. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, yeah. Me. Phew, I'm tired awesome. already. <laughs> oh, there were the 30 seconds, the 30 minutes on that. So, Ivalani, in a nutshell, quickly, just share with us, who are you? Uh, born and raised in Honolulu, actually. Mm -hmm. I live in Mililani now. 40 years teaching hula, Hawaiian wow. studies. Wow. Retired now. And uh, two-time cancer survivor, as you said, mm -hmm. and I, I'm building this beautiful garden of health and wellness wow. for the women of Hawaii and people struggling with cancer. We need a place. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's amazing that you had this place to retreat. You know, like for me, I would go to the beach or I would go to the mountains and retreat, but you have your personal healing garden. Tell us about how did that healing garden come about? Well, I was gifted by my father. Mm -hmm. uh, when I went there, it, it was a dump, actually, and over 500 <laughs> loads to the dump. And still, I'm persevering that to say, you know, I'm going to make I'm going to make a garden. Everybody thought, oh my gosh, did the cancer go to her brain? What is she talking about? Mm -hmm. And I said, no, it, it's about um, knowing who you are and what you want to do. To be persistent. And you know, Wendy, we, we when we want something, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, you will achieve. Right. So now, from a dump, it is a garden. Right. And the photo that we are going to show you shows the dump, and truly, it was a dump. Yeah. And um, I went there because you said, "Come and see it." Yes. Before. And you worked hard too. Yeah. And you know, so did you. And you, I mean, with nails and all. I mean, who would think that this woman was in the garden? And that's where she found her her passion and her healing. And she went there daily. I remember, like, Evelyn, where are you in the garden? It's already dark. What are you doing out there? She was cleaning, yes. weeding out the bad, putting yes. in the good, putting all the mana into the, the healing garden, which you have. Yes. And so hundreds of truckloads of garbage. 500 over. Oh, yes. my gosh. I can't even count that high, Ivalani. <laughs> but tell us a little bit more about it before the demolition. Well, I went there and I started to, to pray and I said, that, you know, there has to be a purpose, you know, a Wendy in our life and for all of you out there, we have a purpose, you know, I'm already, you know, halfway in my journey, I, I'm 69 years old. So I'm thinking, okay, one foot in the grave, I was hit twice with cancer, stage three, what am I going to do? What, what's the legacy I want to leave for my children? What's the voice and the message I want to leave with the women in the community that, um, Believe in me. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to church, mm -hmm. we, we help in the community, whatever it may be. So I wanted a place that they felt free to come and pray. And the purpose was for me to help. Wow, that's beautiful. And that, that, that pathway right now, it wasn't green like that no, before. That black and white exactly. picture earlier, exactly. this was exactly what I saw. Just dirt and, yes. and grime yes. and tons of garbage. But yes. look at what a, a yes. little bit of love, or I should say a lot a of love. A lot of love, yes. And not only from you, but you encouraged all your friends to come on well, down actually, and your yes. family. I burned them all out, including yes. you. Every yes. time when they yes. come, what you doing? Oh, come visit me. And, and then, oh, before you know, an hour is going by and everybody's, you know, um, exhausted. Mm -hmm. and, and I understand that. But I, I had a purpose. I, I was perseverance in, in everything that I needed to do. I was there 10, 15 hours a day mm -hmm. because I wanted to make a difference, not only for myself, but for the family and the community. Right. But you know, the work that we put in there, and I'm sure for you, it wasn't, it's not exhaustion. No. It's just work of love. Yes. And it's the love and the passion that drove us yes. because we knew that not only were you healing, but for us too. How often do we take time, especially like I was, I had a yard when I was younger, but now I don't. I live in a condo, but I really love pulling weeds yes. and cleaning out the rubbish and weeding it out. So we don't have that opportunity. So what you gave to us was that opportunity 
to share our love and to receive from the land for healing. Yeah, well, it's body, mind, and soul. Right, because right. when you're pulling the weed, you're exercising, and then when you're seeing that, oh, it's getting cleaned, it's, you know, gratifying. Mm -hmm. And when people come, they go, oh, wow, this section looks beautiful. And I'm, you know, I'm vain. It's like, oh, thank you. You know, I spent yes. hours here. Yes. But, you know, pretty soon I'm going more and more into the garden and... And I know when you're in the garden, and not only are you pulling the weeds, but you're meditating. Oh, praying, you're taking time meditating. to be still. Yes. And that's kind of amazing because I don't see her still, and I don't see her being quiet. I bet you're talking <laughs> to the birds. Absolutely. And the, the yes. roaches and all the animals yes, and insects yes. over there, right? Yes. But tell us, do you meditate? We have to meditate. Mm -hmm. That's all part of our, our well-being, Wendy. Mm -hmm. You find a place. Not everybody will have a garden, but wherever you find to be a place of meditation. You know, do your research, learn about yourself, learn about cancer, if this is, or what's the dis-ease that will have the disease that's gonna start controlling you. And yes, I believe in meditation 100%, mm -hmm. yes. And in your healing garden or wherever you are, is there a special place that you need to go to to meditate? Well, because it's my garden and we have so many niches in the garden, mm -hmm. I, I go and I pull it in different places, and not only that Malama the Aina, that you give your aloha to the land, but this one place of my meditation room was from my father. Uh, that was his workshop, and left some old antiques in there, and you can see this handsome uh, holly man there that uh, I blew up his picture, and it, it's a reminder of who we are, where I came from, and the gift that he gave me of love and aloha, and to persevere and be everything local. Wow, that's a really beautiful room. You created a, a, a haven. Yeah, it's a prayer place. Right. Yes. And you know, and, and the good thing, Ivalani, you don't just keep it for yourself. You invite everyone to come yes, there. Yes. You invite the keiki to do performances there. Yes. Your daughters come and they use it to, to dance and to bring others in so they can feel yes. just the, the, the mana in there. The, the well, healing. you know, that's our loho style, yeah, yes. our local ways. Yes. yes. And we cannot let that value get diluted. Mm -hmm. Wendy, you're from White and I. We do yeah. these things. You know? And when yes. they look at us, they go, what? You're from Honolulu? Uli. What island is that? Yes. Or, Wendy, you don't look like you're from White and I. <laughs> well, actually, actually, let me tell you, I'm from Miley, I'm... and now they changed it to Maili. Yes. But being so stubborn, I say, well, I was born and raised in Miley. Yes. So I am from Miley. Yes. So maybe the new Kiki now are from Maili. Yes. But I'm from Miley. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, yes. And where is Honolulu? Uli, right? I know, right. Yeah. You, blinked your eye, you missed the whole place. But because, the island. Yes. because I had to pass Uli Uli to get to the big way supermarket in Waipahu. Yes. I knew exactly where that was, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And so, you know, you've been through a lot with your body, and you know, you were saying that your body really, if you really take time to understand and listen to your body, your body has mechanisms to tell you, hey, I'm tired, or hey, I don't feel mm -hmm. well. Tell me about it. Um, can you just share a little bit about that with us? How did you know? What are the mechanisms in your body? Well, you know, looking in the mirror, and which I do often, hello, look at me. <laughs> so, <laughs> I thought it was the epitome of good health. And then I neglected only two years not to get a mammogram. You know, I'm 69, so mm -hmm. in my 40s, uh, I was hit at 48 years old with the breast cancer, and I was hit at 36 earlier uh, with a cervical cancer. But then, you know, I'm thinking, okay, I'm an epitome of health, I'm dancing, I, I'm, I, everything's going great in my life. Mm -hmm. Didn't realize the stress that I was going through. Right, right. And so when I did go in for the mammogram, they told me that I, the cancer was already at stage three, and in three days I had to have my surgery. That's how fast it was an aggressive cancer growing. Right, and that's why that statement about dis-ease. Yes, when you're at dis-ease, right. the disease will come in right. rapidly. Right. Yes. Right. And so, you know, there's women that's, you know, you have to bloom from within. It's, it's an attitude of gratitude, and mm -hmm. I have to say, okay, I got to malama my body, so what, what am I going to do? Immediately, I have to have forgiveness. I have to start talking to myself, mm -hmm. uh, because I didn't believe in a lot of the pharmaceuticals that I needed to take and everything, and, and I just needed to, to me, just have a lot of love and forgiveness and say, what am I going to do as an individual? What am I going to do as a wahine to take yeah. care? Malama Kikino. Right. And, you know, you mentioned pharmaceuticals, but what are other methods or, you know, things that you did to heal yourself? Well, I immediately, you know, I, I don't eat meat, mm -hmm. yes, so for many, many years, mm -hmm. and everybody could be different, but I do, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. which is so important, mm -hmm. all organic, mm -hmm. and I started getting my tower gardens and just, just eating, eating, eating the proper things and exercising and meditating. 
and dancing and laughing a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yes. exactly. And that's, I think, I mean, that's sort of segue into my next yes, question. Yes. What do you do to stay healthier and, yes. you know, mentally? And what do you do? I mean, right there, you laugh a lot. Oh, you know, everybody, you know, we, I went through, Wendy, to be honest, why me, why now, how come? Mm -hmm. uh, I needed to believe in myself. I needed to have positive affirmations. I needed to have forgiveness. I needed to say, okay, this is what happened. Now, Ivalani, act right. What are you going to do to heal yourself? What are you going to do to Malama? What are you going to do to make things right? Mm -hmm. And you oh. have to start talking to yourself. Right, right. Thinking and that's, positive. It, right. It's self-healing? Absolutely. I mean, and that's the whole idea. Like, sometimes when we take, like, vitamin C tablets, yes. we're sick. We feel really bad, so we're going to pop a vitamin C tablet. Oh, I'm going to take this because I want to feel better. So you put that in your body. Your brain is already thinking, I'm feeling better, I'm feeling, because you told it. Yes. And then you put the vitamin C in there, and then what does it do? It creates expensive pee. Yes. Right? <laughs> and it goes right through you. But <laughs> mentally, you're, you're telling yourself, I'm getting healthier, I'm getting healthier. I'm, yes. I'm not as sick. You know, the sugar that you just put in your body it spikes you up, and you're feeling better. So mentally, because that vitamin C tablet did nothing for you. Nothing. So it's all mental. Yes. Right? It's true. And, you know, try to get away as much from sugar, like you said, mm -hmm. also. So we have to be mindful. Like I said, there's so much knowledge out there as far as health and wellness and what to do and not to do. Uh, think about your diet habits mm -hmm. uh, to know that, okay, what, what was I doing wrong? Or should I cut out all my um, sugars and or should I exercise more? You know, so all of that is, is really important. How right. to take control of yourself. Right. And, you know, like from my point of view, I mean, this whole thing is about prevention and awareness. Yes. And so for myself, well, my parents passed away with cancer. And so I always say, if I get the C diagnosis, what would I do? Mm -hmm. And so exactly what you're saying is what I'm already doing. Yes. So, and I want all, all, all of us out there to not wait for the diagnosis. Like, Absolutely. Ivalani, you had the diagnosis and you were a survivor twice. Yes. And now you know what to do. So your heart is to share with the, with Hawaii and the world of what not to do and how to just overcome this? Well, you know, I like to, I brought a beanie baby. I yes. just play with yours too. Oh, so yeah, those that are out there, because we're from Asian backgrounds, yes, yeah? Yes. And uh, and to be honest, women are not malama. They are, they're not, you, you got to malama kick in. You got to malama your, your body, your breasts. And, and we were not raised right, to, to touch, touch ourselves because, mm -hmm. you know, something's wrong with you. Right. Right. <laughs> but now they're staying, you know, you got to touch yourself. So if you have, you feel these little right. um, beans in here, right. you know, lumps. Right. So when you're taking a shower, touch yourself or whatever, or if you're romantic, you know, tell your significant <laughs> other, well, you feel any bumps on me? Connect the dots. Yeah, connect the dots. <laughs> so, okay. you know, so take care. I mean, you know, right. feel it. And right. So, you know, when we had the fundraiser, I had all of these on tables, and I said, okay, just, you know, I was talking about mm -hmm. all of this, and then I turned around, and all my beanie babies were gone, all hundred of them. They all wanted to take them home so they could feel it. Right. And, said, and you know, exactly that? what it feels like, the little pebbles, the little grains of yes. uh, beads in here is exactly what you're going to feel. Yes. Sometimes you're not going to feel them all, but if you do malama, yes. and you do feel this little, that's a little sign Get in right say, away. go check it out. Check it out. It be could be a pimple, it could be something else, yeah, but go check, check it, it out. out. Right? Yes. When in doubt, yeah, check it check out. Check it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, we should market that. Why don't you yeah, check it out? <laughs> yeah, I think I heard that one before. Though. But anyway, so tell us, you know, you went through the twice uh, cancer experience. So what, what, what really was developed in, in your mind to create the healing garden? You know, because I'm so selfish and I needed time, mm -hmm. you know, I was bargaining with the man upstairs and mm -hmm. he said, I'm hit twice. I don't want another third time and, and I'm battling with all of this. And I said, I need to have a place to, to come to and uh, dig, plow, plant, and pray. And you know, when I was doing all of that, I totally forgot I was having cancer, that I had cancer, because I wanted to make everything beautiful. I wanted mm -hmm. my children to see it. I wanted you, I mean, I wanted all my great friends to come out and see and say, wow, look at this great work that you're doing. Yes. And, I, and I needed that, you know, positive affirmation. And I, I needed that um, Stroking, right. yeah. We all need right. that tender, loving care. We wow. need to, to say, "Hey, you can do it." And, and I was talking to myself and keep doing it. And when you would come out, you would say, "Wow, this is this is great. This is." And and, and the women would start coming and say, right. "Good job." And when we can support each other, right. you know, cheer each other right. off. Right. That's right. what happened. And so, so that's a great mental direction that you yes. have to want want to guide us towards. Is that. Not, I mean, don't just sit back and dwell in your No, 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 sadness. you can't be in a pity party. Right, you no. cannot. Because when you came out to, to create this garden to heal, what yeah. you did was all the women that came out, 
the families that came out, yeah. they were healing. Yeah. They were healing by being together and yeah. just being with one in yeah. nature. Absolutely. And a lot of us don't have that opportunity, but we used you as an excuse to go out there to help you. <laughs> but in actuality, we were being healed. That's true. Right? That is and true. so your, your slide says, winners never quit. And quitters, and quitters never, never win. never win. Yes. Yes. And so that's so key. But with that in mind, I'm going to just take a, a little break here, 60 seconds. Go get some water, and we're going to come right back with Eva Lanise and learn more about cancer. Yes. <laughs> yes. Aloha, everyone. Aloha. I want to invite all of you to Talk Story with John Wahei every other Monday here at Think Tech Hawaii. And we have special guests like Professor Colin Moore from the University of Hawaii, who joins us from time to time to talk about the political happenings in this state. Please join us every other Monday. Aloha. Hey, Stan, the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan, the Energy Man, at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Aloha. Here we are back with Eva Lani Seyu and just having a great time uh, just hearing about her experience with being a two-time cancer, breast cancer survivor and cervical cancer survivor, and just hearing the attitude that she had throughout the course of her ordeal and how she involved everybody around her to help her heal, but in actuality, we ourselves were healing as well. Yes. So what we left uh, uh, before the break was winners never quit and quitters never win. So having a positive attitude in life, I mean, just look at this right here. <laughs> Epitome of positiveness, and that's what we need to have to carry on with whatever comes our way. Yes, yes, So yes. would you like to share on that? Oh, yes, absolutely. So everybody, everybody will go through a pity party. Why me? Why now? Mm -hmm. How come? And you'll never get the answers, you know? Uh, because it can be in three different ways. It could be from stress, can mm -hmm. be in DNA, can be in environment. So you never know. But what's important is how you're going to tackle it yourself. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I did the garden. I rallied around. You know, I had people that was positive rally around me. You need that support team. Yes, you do. And you, do. you need to do a lot of research on your own because you know your own body, what you mm -hmm. can take, what you cannot do, what you should do. And I would encourage all of you out there is to just be mindful of yourself and say, okay, this is my body. I only have one body. It's not like you can go out and buy another pair of shoes, right. another body. You cannot. Right. And you just have to say, I need to work diligently with my body mm -hmm. and with the advice of doctors or whatever it may be and go further than that. Right. And I'm sure you spend a lot of time in your healing garden praying Absol to care. Oh, I do a lot of prayer. And speaking with him and just asking for guidance through yes, this healing absolutely. process. Yes. And I tell you, he's heard every prayer that you pray oh, for. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I was no shame. I went down on my knees. Yes, honestly. and that's where we need to. That's where yes. we need to be. So, you know, now that we've um, gone through your healing part, let's talk about some cancer tips. Yes. Okay. So um, just, I know the next slide we'll share, uh, we'll be sharing with you some simple guidelines on tips that you want to share yeah, with. Yeah. Well, you know, audience. don't take anything for granted. Do your breast examination. Like mm -hmm. I said, after two years, they're already into stage three. Take care of your body. If you feel a lump, or like I said, you know, these beanie babies, you know, and you feel fatigue, anything like that, you know that you're going through some kind of stress. Mm -hmm. Your body talks to you. Always. you got to know your Always, body. You yes. have to exercise. Choose mm -hmm. what you like to do. Dancing like you, surfing, mm -hmm. going hiking, gardening, golfing, singing, exercise, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. There's something for everybody out there, yeah? So right. you don't um, think, oh, I cannot dance, or I cannot sing, I don't want to hike. I mean, come on, I'm going to stop Just your walk. You, yeah, can yeah, walk. you can walk. You can walk. You, you can walk. Push walk. in the vacuum yes. in your house and you yes. can, you can whatever you, know. you can do. And then the next slide gives us a few more tips as well that uh, you can go over with everyone. Eat oh, absolutely. Well. Yeah, you have to eat well. You know, know what is good for your body. You know, your personal research to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. Eliminate red meat, well, I did, and pork and, and oily processed food. I mean, you know, that's not my knowledge. It's knowledge out there, yeah? We need to eat organic and stay away, you know, from the sugar, yeah? Mm -hmm. Like I said, I invested 
years, 10, 10 years ago in my tower garden, and I love it. Drink lots of water. Coffee's okay, but stay away from processed drinks, sodas, mm -hmm. all of that. Uh, you know, all this kind of sugary juices, etc. cetera. Uh, create a team. I call you guys, and I say you, because you're so kind to come and support me, my bosom buddies, and, and you know, keep yourself abreast. Mm -hmm. And with your friends, educate, communicate is key. Maintain open communication, keep a journal. Talk to your friendly family and friends right. to know what is going wrong with me, how can I take care of myself, what do I need to do? You know, no shape talk story, but right. sometimes as locals, we we close down. Right. I'm encouraging all of you, open up. Open up. Open right. up, talk story. And just, right. And you also yeah. mentioned, some, you know, all those tips right there, those key tips. It's knowledge. Absolutely. Knowledge, knowledge is, is power. Well. Yes. Knowledge and, is well. And, you know, well. that's what we need to do. Just learn. And, and, and don't wait until the diagnosis comes. Learn mm -hmm. and understand. Watch documentaries like Forks Over Knives and see that's right. how we can get healthier before we even... You know, get the diagnosis. We just want to live in health. That's why this segment is called "Take Your Health Back," and only we can do it for each each of us that ourselves. We need to take our health back in everything we do, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, nutritionally, everything we do. But it's up to us to make that stance to do that for ourselves. Yeah. Yes. Your body is your your temple. Uh, yes. Your one only temple. <laughs> and that's you've got that's to it. take care of it because you cannot go get one you and, and don't wait till yeah. it's too late or don't cannot. wait to say, you know, I'm very fortunate. Mm -hmm. Even if I had the cancer twice, I was able to take hold of it and, and, and be in, in the epitome of the good health I am now. But if I kick back you know, that's not going to help right. me. Cats right. will love stress. Right. They love stress and they'll eat you up faster. Right. That's what so, triggers it yes. faster. So you, you need to not, right. you have to be So stressful. knowledge is definitely power. So tell us a little bit, you know, we live in a land of sunshine. And so tell us about your knowledge about sun and what it does to our bodies. You know, I, I love sun. You know, when I was younger, I was a sun goddess, you know, hanging out on the beach and everything. But after uh, too much sun, too much sun can actually trigger out. We all have cancer cells. Right. Everybody has cancer right. cells. Please know that. And sometimes it'll trigger off. So you have to protect yourself from sun. Use a lot of sunscreen because uh, you need, everybody needs to protect themselves. And, I, and because we're in Hawaii, again, be more mindful to how much sun your body can actually take. Mm -hmm. And then, and you know, use all your moisturizers and everything else that, uh, because we need sun, it's good for us. But again, like for myself now, mm -hmm. because I am obviously a cancer survivor and victim, mm -hmm. I kind of stay in the sun. Right. The right. sun will eat up all my good cells right. actually right. for the cancer. Right, right. Well, and so but you're a cancer survivor and a beautiful cancer survivor. I was a and, successor. Yay! Yeah, yes, Imoa. <laughs> and, you know, they're going to use you to be the voice as well because you're not only beautiful, but you have a voice that people will listen to as yes. you encourage along uh, the journey of even prevention. Absolutely. You know, yes. and so I on the next slide um I see that you were featured in a cancer guide. Yeah, it was yeah, really Garden exciting. Blues, yeah. Hope and Healing. Absolutely. I was so excited because this is a national magazine. Yes. And it, and you know, in 15 years, they haven't featured anybody from Hawaii. <laughs> and in fact, I'm the first one. And I, I was just tickled pink. <laughs> I was, and I was just so excited. And you know, they wanted to, uh, they, they heard my story, of course, because I was featured in, in magazines and on midweek. and. Uh, and the things that we were doing, the women like yourselves that mm -hmm. came in and posed, you know, for the book that we're working on, and just so many great things. That, and I, I was just so thrilled. And yes, yes, wow. I'm in that, that magazine. And, you know, I guess that must have um, opened up another can of worms for Ivalani because since then, and then uh, she's called us many times, hey, I want to make this book. I want to make this book happen. Yes. And uh, predominantly Hawaii, yes. women of Hawaii, and different races of Hawaii. And she wanted to feature... Um, Tell them about well, it. Well, magnificent <laughs> women of Hawaii. Yes. You know, when I was, you know, when I was very sick, and I, this dream kept coming to me about doing this coffee table book, yes. and and so I started calling all you folks, and you said, <laughs> oh, okay, you know, but you came without a doubt, uh, a bird of yourself, and yes. it's called Magnificent Women of Hawaii. It's called uh, Show It All, but See Nothing, yeah. Right. So I've been sitting on this for ten years. It's like the dove, the dove girls, yes, right? It's like yes. the dove girls, and in the mainland they have the older women. Yes. And they're classically photographed 
with with very little to nothing on. Oh, nothing on. Yeah, yes, and yes. Um, just featuring their body and the love of their body and how they need to nurture and take care of it. Mm -hmm. And so, Ivalani, you've called many times, and we've done a few photo shoots. Oh yes, <laughs> it was so awesome. It's it so amazing, awesome. and it's and, and I know that you want to produce it into a book. Yes, and it's going yes. to take a lot of money. I've been sitting mm -hmm. on it because if it's not classy, I don't want to do it at all. Right. I want to do a coffee table book to give to the, our state library, to the oncologist, to all the schools so the young girls can educate themselves. And and it's going to cost money, over $50,000. Right. And so right. I have to have this grand gala. You're going to help me out, Wendy? I shall <laughs> help you. <laughs> I just want to make it a beautiful, beautiful event. Right. And the proceeds will go to, to start this book so that we can give these books out as knowledge right. to help other women. Right. You know, our right. own stories that can inspire them. Right. But we need a lot of help. We need a lot of help. Yeah, so I know um, as the year comes around, 2019, We'll start meeting and organizing this gala, Yay. so that we can bring women, uh, young and old, yes. to the gala and to educate them and show them, yes. you know, what 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 can our lives be, or even if with a diagnosis, yes. what can it be? And you're a true classic example of, of of a survivor. Thank you. And we want more women to go through it like you, if they are diagnosed with it. Yes. But our main goal is to not let them get to that point. To that point. We're going to have great entertainment. Right. And people already lined up. Right. People always say they're going to help out. And we're going to feature all of your folks' photos. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be public now. You know? oh, <laughs> are you going to charge them to see it? Uh, oh, absolutely. Because <laughs> we got to raise money for the book. <laughs> yes, 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 of course. And it's for a cause. And absolutely, so we're yes. going to do what it takes um, yes. just so that this book can materialize. And I can envision it as, you know, maybe when a woman goes in and she gets the diagnosis, maybe the oncologists in their office will have a stack of these and say, hey, here's hope and inspiration. Yes. Read this and be inspired that this is not the beginning to the end, but this is just the beginning for your journey. Absolutely. And it's going to be bright and pink, and you need to see it that way. And this is all the guidelines that you need to help you through that journey. Yes. And so I can see that this book will be very inspirational. Oh, yeah, we're going to take it too. Yes. Oprah and Ellen DeGeneres, you know, I'm not going to stop. Once we get that grand gala going and That's people right. want to come and see and become a beautiful coffee table book, right. we're going to go all the way, right. all the way. And I know we can't, um, I know there's going to be a big surprise. Yes. There's going to be a many big surprises at this event. So just look for the pink Yay. invites from Eva Lani Seyu and the Breast Cancer Awareness Thank Group. You. And uh, we're just going to work hard on that and make that happen. And uh, I want to just close with the last slide. Um, it says when you look at the word disease, I really want you all to look at that word disease. Yes. And what it truly is, is, is dis -ease. ease. Yes. You know, and so we really want to stay positive on, on this word disease, even though it's so negative. But when you have this ease, this is what happens with the body. It, it, it acts out in many negative ways. Yes. And so we really want to be aware of that. So can you just uh, expound on that a little bit? Absolutely. So when you know that you have um, cancer or any kind of illness going mm -hmm. on, I get everything that we just talked about. Right. You have to be positive. You have to meditate. Yes. You have to exercise. You have to eat well. Yes. Because... When you're at dis-ease, that disease will eat you up. Exactly. So you need to be more mindful and malama kekino and just say, you know, we're in this journey once. We're going to make it the best we can. Yes. Be happy and yes. positive. Yes. And, yes. and give all the praise and glory. Mahalo ke mm -hmm. Yes. And thank you so much, Ivalani. You know, just coming on to the show and being the voice the positive pink voice Yay. for the women, for all throughout Hawaii, throughout the world, that they can be inspired, that they can get through this diagnosis as you have yes. a few times. And so that's it though. No Never more. Give up. Never give up. Positive attitude. Take time to be still. Meditate and just, just find time. I don't care if you don't have a healing garden. Make friends with Ivalani. Yeah. She's very nice. That's a lot. Yes. Enjoy. Make yeah. fun of Or make your own garden. <laughs> Find a space in your room. Go to the beach. Yes. You know, or just just be still and listen to your body and just be and still and think positive thoughts and rebuke anything negative that's yes, coming your way. You. Right? Yes. No matter what situation we get ourselves into. That is All right. True. Oh, so mahalo. Yes. Mahalo. All right. So we want to say right now, everyone, just be aware of educate and love your body. Aloha from now. Aloha, everyone. Ahui ho, ahui ho. Woohoo! Take your body.